All right. Hello, everyone. I am AA0Z. My name is Kyle. Welcome to the channel. I'm going to flip back to the Zoom here where I've got some friends. Oh, not that one. How about that one? I've got uh, Tom, November 3, Whiskey Sierra. Hello, Tom. And I got uh, KM9G, Steve, T.O., Temporary Offline. So, um, we're going to make this short and sweet. We're going to see how short it gets, though. Um, uh Uh-oh. I've got uh, feedback here. Okay, very good. Um, if anyone did not see, we, uh, we had a good group of guys, I think six, that, uh, we all put together more Serenos about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Right, guys? Oh, uh, hang on. I, uh, I don't have your audio. Sorry. No audio on the, on the guys here, but, uh, now, now we've got some audio. Give me a test, guys. Hello. Test, test. Okay. Very good. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um. So we put together the Morserinos and uh, played around with them. Right, first, it comes in a kit. And the Morserinos that we are showing today um, are sold out. From what I understand, you cannot get them. There is going to be a Morserino 2.0. or Mors- This is a Morserino 32. Maybe they'll come out with the 64. Who, who knows? <laughs> but... From what I understand, you cannot buy these more Serenos anymore. So you have to wait until the next version. But we thought we'd get together and just update everyone on what we've been doing with the uh, the more Sereno so far. And maybe, um, uh, oh, Chuck's wanting in here. And I got to adjust my screen once uh, Chuck gets in here. Uh, maybe not. Oh, no, nope. it'll, it'll size accordingly all right good deal and um just to do a little uh, update on what we've been doing um how we uh what we thought about the kit build what we thought about the configuration what type of configuration we've put in because uh i think that uh, tom's going to update us on kind of the the snapshots you can you can um put snapshots in the uh in the, the unit so you don't have to recall uh, different uh, uh, servers that you want to connect to. So I don't know if you want to go first, uh, Tom, and uh, just kind of go through your experiences on what you've been doing with the Morse Reno and uh, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, and maybe we can uh, just get into a discussion after everyone goes around the room here on some configuration tips and tricks, and maybe we can connect to a server and maybe send some CW. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, first of all, I think it's been one of the best devices that I've ever had or used for CW. And that's compared to apps for my phone. Um, I mean, there's some great programs on the computer uh, that you can use, which I think are, are fantastic too. But for something that I want to practice Morse code with, I, I think the Morse Arena has been it. Um, I've been using it a lot. I you know, put a nice battery in it. Uh, it doesn't come with a battery, so I bought a, a battery and put that in there. And I was telling Kyle before the, the stream started, uh, my wife had a doctor's appointment today and I actually took it with me in the car. And when she went into the doctor's appointment, I sat in the car and did some Morse code practice uh, with it. And that's that's what I like about it the most is you can just take it anywhere. What, um, uh, what battery did you get? Just uh, so everyone knows. Yeah, it's an Amazon battery. And I think it was... 2,500 milliamps and it was $10. Um, and it's a, a flat battery that fit in the bottom of the Morse arena with tons of room to spare. You could put even a bigger battery in there, but I've been using, I mean, I, th- I think this bought, I bought this battery like the week after we built it and I've been using it since then. And the battery hasn't dropped in voltage. Wow. So it's, it's a magic battery, but cause I've been using it like crazy and that's what I wanted. I wanted something I didn't have to worry about the battery um, doing anything. So it's been great. Um, I've used it uh, quite a bit, messed with the configuration. Let me get it to focus here. Yeah, that's the problem that I've been having is the getting the, the unit to focus cause it's, 
There you go. Now mm -hmm. it looks good. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of, you can do with it. And there's a lot of little things that you miss sometimes when you're playing with it. And, and I've been experimenting with a bunch of the stuff like that. Uh, just getting it set up the way you want it to. Um, there's a bunch of menus and when you first get it, there's some, there's certain things you need to do with the rotary encoder. Uh, you can obviously turn it to make selections. Uh, you press and hold to go backwards and quick click to go forwards in the menu, but you can also double tap it uh, from the main menu and it takes you into the set the preferences meeting, uh, the preferences menu. And that's where you can set the tone pitch, uh, the paddle setup, the, um, whether you want the dits and dahs reversed, the, the latency, you know, the, the keyer mode, um, and everything. Uh, the ones, ones that I have changed is um, inner word spacing. I've uh, changed that a little bit. Uh, I'll increase that if I need more time to when I'm using the echo trainer, which is where it plays uh, some characters and you play it back. Uh, if you need a little bit more time before you can uh, enter the character back, you can increase that. The same with uh, inner character spacing. It just gives you a little bit more space in between characters. So that um, is only when you're when it's playing back a uh, sequence uh, characters. It, yeah. it is that Farnsworth spacing or is that just spacing between? So I guess Farnsworth spacing would be the character spacing and the yeah. the 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 word spacing is just how quickly the, they between the words, right? Right, right. So if I'm doing, you know, the uh, alphabet group on uh, Echo Trainer and I have it doing two characters for me, um, it'll do if you the the spacing is fine. We're spacing for the for the characters and the word. You can you just increase it enough to where if you don't get them right away, it gives you an extra second before it gives you an error. Um, so that's that's nice. And with the the settings on it, you can do alpha. You can do numerals. Um, uh, punctuation, pro signs, alpha, you know, combinations of everything. Um, so it's really been helpful for me because I, one of the things that I was struggling with instant recognition with was, was numbers. So I was just doing, you know, numerals for a while, practicing numerals and that, that helped a lot. So lots of stuff, uh, again, to go back. Um, and your, and your Wi-Fi settings are, are not in um the, the settings portion of it it is a separate menu correct correct to set the wi-fi you have to go into the transceiver menu and uh go into wi-fi transmit that actually doesn't transmit what that does is that starts a uh a web server on your morse Arena that you have to connect to with either your phone or a computer over wi-fi it'll show up as an access point and you connect to it and go to that website, and that's how you configure the the Morse Arena Wi-Fi. That's yep. one thing I would like to see changed in version two. I would like them to see that you'd be to be able to enter your Wi-Fi SSID and password right on the Morse Arena, so you don't have to do that. Yeah, I agree. Would, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, that would be something that was nice because that's all you're using that web that for. But once you do that. Um, you know, then you can, uh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, Wi-Fi functions. Yeah, you go in and configure Wi-Fi and that's what sets up the, uh, the Morse Arena uh, access point and you connect to it. And then you can check your Wi-Fi and it'll tell you like there, it's connected to my home internet, gives me yep. my IP address. Um, and you can test it. You know, when you're doing it on the website, it's case sensitive and you have to do all that, but it works really well. Um, Kyle mentioned the snapshots and what that is, that's just multiple configurations you can have for this because uh, you may have, you may use this at home and connect to the Wi-Fi at home. Uh, you may use it at, uh, you know, your friend's house. If you go over there, you may want to connect to, his, you know, his Wi-Fi. So you, you don't want to have to use a web browser to change that every time. And you do that by um, setting up what they call snapshots. And in the snapshots, basically, you can have multiple um, 
configurations with various settings on it. I have multiple snapshots, one to connect to uh, a chat server that Morserino has um, that they put out. Another one is there's a chat bot online where you can go and practice talking to a, um, a chat bot, which is good for practice. It actually works really well. So there's a lot of features like that with it. The snapshots is pretty easy to use. You go into the menu, a short press on the red button will bring up snapshots and it'll say, do I want to recall a snapshot? And I can just, you know, choose which one I want to recall. Snapshot recalled. This happens to be my one for the, um, chatbot the one thing that i wish that they would have done was after let's say you get the ip address in the morse reno maybe you could connect to the morse reno with your phone and rename the snapshots to something that is other than snapshot one two three four you know yeah that that would also be useful that's that's an excellent excellent point because yeah uh you program i think it takes eight or nine snapshots and once you do those, if you forget what it is uh, and try to go back, you, you will never remember what they are. Yeah. If you put them all in. So I wonder if we can connect to the, uh, the Morse Reno transceiver and maybe send some Morse code back and forth and see if it actually... Uh, there you go, Chuck. I was waiting for you to clean your lens, man. Woo! Oh, now, now we can't hear you. But... Uh, you want to see if we can uh, connect to the the uh, the Morserino transceiver and uh, see if we can send some code here. Um, yeah. I need to I need to figure out which 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 mine is, which snapshot it is on mine. But if if you connect to it, Tom, and. Yeah. Give me like just the last octet on the IP address that pops up. I'll write it down and just uh, go through my snapshots. I believe it's this one, and it's uh, forty-six. Forty-six. All right. I believe that's the uh, Morserino one. Chuck, you got a typewriter in the background. A typewriter? No, it's a, it's a Chihuahua typewriter, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to use a different camera, to, but it decided to stop on me, so. Then I finally looked like, how come it looks so bad? Just walked in the door, man. Now, now my... So, Tom, you're going to have to school me again after you get into transceiver mode you go to wi-fi transmitter and then you click the you click the back the, the black button yeah once you get into you go to uh transceiver mode yeah go to wi-fi trx and then that will connect you yeah my snapshots let me let me go to snapshot three. Oh, no, that's three is one ninety seven. That's not it. Let me go to four. There it is. The four forty six. All right, so I am connected. If you send a hi, um, it will. It should respond with a K. No, I'm not getting. Anything. I'm not getting anything either. <laughs> I was. Just, I got in a second ago. Let me try connecting again. So w one thing that I have noticed. I don't know about you guys, but these servers, these Morserino servers, are not the best. Steve, have you uh, have you connected to any of the servers? I have not had a chance to use this thing all that much because this one over here has been uh, stealing it. Ah, 
have is that becca yeah. yes have um, have you have you connected to the internet on your morse reno i have not i don't know morse code so i was just trying to learn it. oh gotcha yeah the every time that i send hi it doesn't connect uh you know what it is sometimes this and this is this is something with the morse arena that you do get um so if i go into recall my uh, snapshot three it might not be 46 might not be the right one um, oh you do have sometimes you have to power it off and then power it back on before it will change and connect so oh, let okay see. Let me uh, let me do that. So let me try my transceiver. So I got to go to snapshot four recalled. Connecting. All right. Yep, I'm not connecting now, and I this has happened to me more than once. So yeah, everything's it is, overloaded because we're streaming it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Let Sometimes me make sure I'm connected to the Wi Fi. I'm going to try one of the other ones and see if I get it working. Nope. So when I, when I run into problems, what I'll do is go to Wi Fi functions. Check my Wi-Fi. It says I'm connected, so I'm sure I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. Transceiver. Try my Wi-Fi. Okay, it says I'm con. Nope. So this is what I ran into. I I was um. Wish that it was a little bit more reliable, you know? Yeah. And I think it's the servers. A lot of times I think it is the servers because when I was running my own server here at the house, uh, I was connecting to it every time, but you were having trouble connecting to it. Right. Yeah. And I found that uh, sometimes it takes a second or two for it to connect, but uh, yeah, I'm not connecting to that one. Let me try connecting to another one. Yeah. You want to give me another, uh, Whatever one you connect to, and I'll see if I can connect. You know, these are single slot servers, and you guys are fighting each other, right? <laughs> I hope they're not single slot. Uh, let me uh, try resetting again. <laughs> first in, first out. So. Yeah. No, I can't get connected to any of them. And it, although I'm changing, I'm changing my snapshot and my uh, transceiver was IP wasn't changing. Look at the little pile of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Just hit it harder. It'll work. You know what's crazy is I've played piano for forty years. On a Casio? Uh, I did have a Casio, yes. That was my first keyboard. Yep. I could play Take On Me. I had a, yep, I had a Casio, and then I took uh, started get, uh, taking lessons whenever I was six. My parents forced me to take lessons, and uh, my piano teacher had a full grand piano. Not a baby grand, a full grand in her basement. Nice. In the basement, huh? Yeah, yeah. They take it down piece by piece? I don't Still know here. how they got it. I was six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Kyle. <laughs> All right, Tom, which, uh, which one are you connecting to? You still connecting to, to 46? I can't connect to either one of them. Yeah. I can't connect to any of them now. And I, like I said, I've... I've had this before, but I'm not too, sh you know, it's hard to tell whether it's the Morse Arena or if it's the server, because sometimes the servers do stop working, it seems. Well, you want to demonstrate the, um, the ability for it to send 
words to you and then you send it back? Sure. Um, do, do, do. That is the echo trainer. Uh, there are different modes. Uh, we'll start, I'll, let's go through the modes. There's CW sure. keyer. Uh, CW keyer just Oops. lets you key on the Morserino and it will display it on the screen. Um, this is good if you're trying to practice your uh, CQ and your call sign. And it lets you do that. Um, to change the speed, you just simply spin the dial. So I can crank it up to 25 or 26 and try sending. What do you think about those capacitive touch pads there or uh, paddles? Uh, I, I don't like them. I was not a fan. I, I don't like them either. Uh, yeah. I will have to admit. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're, they take a little bit to get used to. Um, I like them just the fact that because I don't have to take something else with me when I go portable to, to practice. Um, you can change the volume on the Morserino when you're in one of these keying, any of the keying screens by simply pressing the red button. So before we go too far away from the touch panel thing, yeah. they, they are very good. I think the issue with it is that they are super, super sensitive. So you, if you touch yeah. it just a little tiny bit, you get like three dits in a row. And, right. so, yeah. and then it picks up that you put in three dits and marks you as wrong. So it's very frustrating for like a, a new person, but it does take an external keyer, works fantastic. And that's what I've been using it with. Yeah, yeah. The, good. the good point. touch panels will also um, they'll work themselves loose after you've been using it for a little bit and you'll have to push them back down. And I've heard that some people will put a piece of plastic in between the case and the paddles to hold them down in down tighter. Um, but it's, it's work, you know, I've been using them. Uh, like I said, I have a key too, but I've been using the paddles and I've actually grown to learn to like them a little bit. Um, but yeah, you can spin the dial, change the speed, press the red key once that gives you volume. Um, but I found when you go down too low on volume, it changes the, the sound. That's too low. So no code text asking if it can be used with a straight key. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it can be used as a straight key. Um, one Thank of you. the other things that I found that wasn't in the manual, uh, you, which is interesting, if you're practicing uh, Morse code generation and you want to see what was on the screen up above, if you press and hold the red button for a second, it goes into a scroll mode. And oh, you I can just scroll got, back up. I just got connected. Oh, cool. Woohoo. I don't know which one I'm connected to. I think the the one that ends in 46. I think that's my number three. Let me try to pull up my snapshot. So I sent hi a couple of times and it never sent me a K back, but then it told me I was timed out. Oh, I, I just got connected. And it said time out, but that might, that might not be for me. Okay, so try and connect again. Send a hi again. There you go. Yeah, I'm in. All right, ready? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. You're not getting anything. No. Oh, jeez. You sent some stuff. Nothing. Yeah. And it should come back and tell you which user you are. Um... I don't think it's. I don't think it's sending anything. Yeah. All right, back to our regular scheduled program. It can be frustrating, yeah. Um, I will use the chat bot online sometimes, but for the most part, I just use the Morserino by itself, um, which I think is excellent. I, I think that the Wi-Fi is a little quirky. Um, so again, version two, I, I'll be really curious to see version two. Um, but 
for the other stuff, um, it's 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 great as far as the other stuff go. Like I said, the CW keyer that just lets you key information in uh, for you to practice your sending. Um, CW generator, it just plays Morse code for you. Um, and you just, and I have it set for random characters and it will literally just start sending. Let me turn it up a little bit. And it's just gonna go through and keep sending characters until you long press until you're done. Um, even in the each one of these modes, there are um, different settings. There's random, uh, CW abbreviations, English words, call signs, and mixed. Um, and also you can upload a text file and it'll play a text file for you. Um, I didn't know that when I bought this. I thought it just did CW and did random characters. I didn't know it did call signs, English words, and everything else. Um, so I was pretty pretty impressed when I got it and was like, wow. And you can set how long the word how long the words and stuff you want. And I have it set to send the words twice which you can have it send it as many times as you want. So yep. if you're trying to learn, um, again, another feature uh, th that's great. Hey, Tom, one of the things I had trouble with on it was the cock trainer, coach, coach trainer, cook trainer. Yeah. Um, I was <laughs> lesson three, and it would just give me a new letter of say, I don't know, J, I don't know what lesson three is off the top of my head, but it would just do J for like an hour and a half straight if I let it. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not cumulative. I found that out too, because I was trying to do that, but it's not, the normal Koch method is cumulative where lesson one gives you one letter, lesson two gives you two letters, lesson three adds, you know, one or two more and it builds up. This one, it, it's only one letter at a time. Um, so that's why I mainly use the echo trainer. Um, and I go in and I, I usually have it set for random and I'm not sure if I have it, how many characters I have it set for but we'll see. I think the echo trainer is probably the best feature of, on it. I, I had it set for one character because I was trying to um, uh, increase my um, instant recognition. That was Jay. S. L. Him. Yeah. So it's the echo trainer itself to me is one of my favorite features. Um, now they tell you, you should learn Morse code at, at higher speeds. Uh, you can't do that with the echo trainer unless you can enter them in this fast, that fast too, which I think is difficult to do. Um, I have a hard time sending it 25 words or from trying to learn, listen at 30 words. I just go to, um, CW gen the generator and let it generate the, the the characters for me and just listen. It's that way. Yeah, I think that this is a great tool. It is another tool in your toolbox of learning CW, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got you've got learn CW online. You've got this device. Um, you've got Morse Ninja which basically just shoots you to YouTube videos where it sends whatever you need or whatever it, uh, the lesson is. And then it tells you, it says the, the word or the call sign or the letters it sent with a courtesy beep and then moves on. Yeah. So there's a whole myriad of things that I think you can, if you're learning CW, you put that in your tool belt and you find which one works best for you, right? Yeah, I still go back to Morse Runner if I want to practice the more, oh, with Morse Runner, uh, learn CW online again. They're 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 great programs, um, but for portable oper for portable practice, I, I still I still think the Morse Arena is one of the best. Um, one thing that I did for practice, the Morse Arena, uh, it has a headphone jack, which is great. I don't drive my wife crazy, um, but it also has <laughs> the you can use this as a keyer on your radio as well. So yeah. if you wanted to put this in line, 
You, so you can see what you, if you put it in CW keyer mode, whatever you send will get sent to your radio, but you have to hook this up to your radio and configure your radio as a straight key and use a mono jack cable. Well, that's that's how, that's how it does it. It will not do it uh, stereo. And that's because it, uh, that's the way it triggers the, um, the break on the, on your radio. Cause I was trying to get it to work and I, I couldn't get it to work. And there's a, um, a groups IO more Sereno group where the creator of this is in constantly and will answer everybody's questions. And he had commented to somebody else oh, that you got to use a, uh, a mono jack and configure your radio as a, to accept the straight key. And that's how that, that works. But um, yeah, I've been using it quite a bit. Um, I kind of wish I knew somebody else who had one that was close by so I could try using the LoRa. Um, oh, that's right. It does have LoRa built in. Yeah. 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 So I think this would be something good for a club that was like doing a CW class, classroom type thing, you know, where they could go in and sit down and try to, uh, you know, practice sending uh, in there. Um, I did CW ops, the, the training uh, level one and level two, and you had to have your radio next to you and had a, you know, have it set up so you could key your radio so they could hear it over the, over the zoom call. And I think this would be excellent for that as well, you know, for, yeah, so for this, online training. Yeah, fantastic club build kit because it's only, what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces. Yeah, it was, it was very hard. easy to build, I think. Yeah. yeah. So you could get it built and you could, you could get on the air in, with Laura in the same room within an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Who's this Laura chick? Well, that's my, she, does she come to your house or what? <laughs> not, not that kind of show, Chuck. That's your other. <laughs> oh, that was okay earlier. So, um, have you, Tom? Have you used it as just a keyer on CW Ops or um, just playing around? Like, I, I there's a lot of people that sign up for. Long Island CW Club, and they, you know, it's one thing to to listen to the to the letters, but then you also have to practice sending. So therefore, they, um, you know, I, there's questions. I don't know if anybody, if you guys are are club members, um, but yeah, no. <clears throat> about once every two days, there's somebody asking for what key or should I get to hook up to my computer, or what key or should I get to so my um, computer can can hear it, and this would be a perfect solution on setting the the, the Morse Reno right beside your computer microphone and uh, uh, being able to send dits and dahs over the Zoom session. Yeah, yeah. I bought a cheap keyer when I first started, and it it really didn't work good. I couldn't control the volume, and uh, it it worked, but it was a little flaky. Um, and then, like I said, I actually had to set the radio next to the computer and do my Zoom call. Um, the problem with that is a lot of people uh, in my CW Ops class were trapped, were you know, traveled and worked from hotels, and they would get into the class, but they weren't able to send that night. Where this right. is something to be small enough. Although I'd be curious what would happen if you tried to take this through an airport. Yeah, as long as you could, as long as it it booted up. Right. Yeah. And you could demonstrate it, I guess. They, they, maybe they wouldn't, uh, they, they probably wouldn't. I mean, I got, I got searched at an airport, uh, taking a scuba regulator one time through check baggage. Yeah. You know? Cause you can't put those in the hall of the plane. And I, they're like, what is this? I'm like, uh, it's a scuba regulator. And they're like, well, can you step to the side? And they had a guy come over and then finally some guy came over and he goes, Oh, that's a, that's a scuba regulator. He's like, let them go through. You know, it's, it, yeah. I think it's a matter of who you get that day. Right. Um, right. No, so it's a crapshoot. Um, yeah. Yeah. But now it was very easy to put together. Like I said, you can see the battery I put in the bottom that you can see the yellow tape on the battery. And I just had it Velcroed into that bottom section, but you can see how much room is still underneath there. And that, that battery was ten dollars from Amazon, and it worked fantastic. So, No Name asks, "What is a good way to send CW over the internet? Mumble, Google Meet, ET, uh, something other? <laughs> ETC? What is ETC?" Um, <laughs> so, 
Long Island CW Club, and I'm not sure of CW Ops, but they use Zoom. And if you go into the settings in Zoom, in your audio settings, and you take off all of the compression, uh, let's see. Test speed. Uh, let me go into the settings here. Uh, I really can't right now. But if you go into... You go into the settings of your Zoom and turn all of the background, um, the background. Uh, uh, oh, what am I trying to say, guys? Here, um, Steve, what what do you say? Why am I? Hang on, hang on. Got twenty-seven microphones hooked up to his computer. Yeah, sorry, sorry. It's it uh, switched to a Dax channel uh, on my. Say it again, Steve. Sorry about that. Uh, noise cancellation, echo cancellation, yep. clipping, etc. It, it's got a Zoom has a ridiculous amount of features. It does a fantastic job at audio conferencing, video conferencing. But for some of the more technical stuff that we do, it's uh, a little overkill. Like Zoom yeah. does a better green screen than OBS does. Yeah. yeah. So you got to turn off all of that background stuff and don't uh, enable compression, uh, echo, cancel is, um, um, noise cancelization. And if you disable all that stuff, uh, your cut, your CW comes through your computer or your mixer or whatever you're using much easier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. His question was about sending Morse code over Wi-Fi. And I've, I've heard of Mumble, but I haven't used it. Um, the Morse Arena really was, I mean, it was supposed to be that for everyone to be able to send Morse code over Wi-Fi. Um, and it does work. It's a little kludgy sometimes. Um, like I just tried again, Cal, and I was able to connect to the, the QSO bot. Oh, so, yeah. So, so explain, was, the, explain the QSO bot. Yeah, it's a web server, you program it into the Morse Arena, you, when you connect to it, um, if I send a CQ right now, a, a bot, a chat bot will answer me. And you can, it'll, it'll do a full conversation. It'll, uh, it'll repeat your call sign back to you. And if you say what your name is, it'll start calling you by name. Uh, it it wants the weather in this area. It'll tell you what kind of antenna it's using. <laughs> yeah, it goes through a, a basic, a, a simple Morse code chat. And that gives you, you know, you're, I think for beginner CW uh, people that are learning Morse code, one of the fears is to get online and try to have a conversation with somebody and screw it up and not be able to do it. The, the chat bot is that kind of neat little thing in between where it lets you do that and lets you practice that. Um, yeah. I've used it a few times. Um, what what I do though sometimes when I when I go into the chat bot, um, I'll either uh, put something on top of the screen so I can't see it, so it forces me to list because if I if I send my CQ and it answers me, it's going to come across the screen, um, and you can turn that off on the menus. You can tell it you don't want it to display, um, so you're not cheating when you're trying to do QSOs uh, on the Morse Arena, um, but it is it does work really well if you. If you want to practice with other people that have a Morse Arena, Morse Arena, you can build your own little chat server on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, yeah. it's just a, it's just a simple Perl script. You just um, Python. Yeah, Python script. You run the Python okay. script, and then you can connect to it. Um, you'd have to open up, you know, uh, use port forwarding on your router or something like that if you didn't have public IP. Um, but then you could chat to multiple people. But there's already servers out there that you can use. Uh, the Morse Arena guy has one. Uh, I think Long Island CW Club has one that they connect to. Um, and I've seen some other people uh, in the chat, the IO groups post, hey, here's my Morse Arena server. Try to connect to it, you know. Right. So, so it's something that you can do. Um, it, like I said, it, this, this is really good for what it is and uh, where it is. See, it's going to time out because I haven't said anything to the chat bot. Um, but it is does have those little quirks and kludgy features. Um, yeah. I'm really excited about version two. I, I think he said he might have it out by Christmas or something, but uh, 
Um, we'll see, but uh, I, I, I think with what he's learned from doing this and the complaints and stuff he's had and the features that people have requested, uh, I, I think he's somebody who listens um, because when it first came out, it couldn't do some of the stuff it's doing now. It didn't support straight keys. It didn't do that. And he was able to update it through firmware and really improve it. So going forward in the future, I, I think the version two one, uh, like I said, I'm pretty excited to what he's going to make. Yeah. Yeah. Not to, um, uh, put the Morserino down, but there is another technology that if you're in the Long Island CW Club, they did a presentation a couple of Saturdays ago, and it is on the internet. It's not available to everyone yet, um, but if you're a Long Island CW Club member, you have access to it. And um, it, the, <laughs> the guys that programmed it really thought of everything, and it is a internet a keyer-to-keyer through the internet with a web page interface that decodes and sends, you know, Morse code, whatever you're sending over the internet and basically um, displays it to everyone that is connected to the channel that you are connected to. So uh, nice. it's got four channels right now and there's people in each channel almost every single day because, you know, the, CW or the Long Island CW Club, I think it's got like, I think like 500 members or something. And there's people playing around in there, and they also do a lot of uh, some of their classes sending uh, code in one of the channels. And um, it is very neat. Um, and there is very little lag, and it's reliable too. So um, if you're a mm -hmm. Long Island CW Club member, I would suggest you go check it out. They they asked not to announce the the website because they wanted to keep it just in the the club for beta testing. But uh, it is coming and it is out there. It, it is really neat. Now, is it hardware? There is. So it is key. So right now it is keyboard based. You use your keyboard, like I I'm doing on my keyboard here with like either the left, right, or or the the um, brackets. But there is a a uh, piece of hardware that you can buy that helps support the server that it runs on. I think it's like $25 or $30. You plug your keyer into it, and you plug it into the USB port on the back of your computer, and it simulates the keyboard uh, tapping back and forth on whatever, okay. <clears throat> whatever uh, keys you designate, and it sends. So, okay. you know, you can do right paddle for left bracket and right paddle or, uh, yeah, uh, right bracket for right paddle. And, um, yeah, it's very reliable, too. I've been goofing around with it, and um, it is more reliable than uh, connecting to an IP address on your Morserino. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's interesting. I, I, think, I think tools like that are going to help people... Um, you know, get more into it and get more practice. And I think that's the whole thing with CW is the more you, you, you get online and practice, they, you know, they tell you that you should just, you know, once you learn the alphabet, just get online and start calling CT, CQ. Um, but that's, that's, that's hard to actually force yourself to do. Yeah. Well, it's and it's, actually, you know, it's harder for you to do that than it is for the other ham on the other end to respond. Everybody on the other side of the QSO is going to be very happy that you're trying and learning and joining them. And you're going to be scared out of your mind, just panicking and paranoid with fear. Yeah, you're going to yeah. you're going to end a, a 15 letter QSO sweating, but that's yeah. all you. So yeah. just do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and if we were talking about it before we started streaming here, if someone sends, if you call CQ and they're sending at 25 or 30 words a minute and not doing the Farnworth spacing that you're accustomed to, or Whatever the case may be, don't answer them back. Yep. Next, a act act like you can't hear them and keep going. You know, um, I mean, it's yeah. tough whenever they keep sending over and over, but change frequency. You know, and call CQ somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 almost there. I, you know, I, I want to do it for one of my pod activations. I'm going to go out and try doing some CW. You know, I'll probably do single side <coughs> first, and then probably. 
you know, go do some CW warm up and then do a little CW. It always seems like I have to warm up. If I just go cold I, turkey and try to do it, I choke. You got to take your Ellicraft with you? Yeah. Yeah. So set your keyer up inside your Ellicraft to uh, help you out a little bit. I mean, don't, don't Decode, rely on yeah. it, but know that it's there as a crutch if you need it. Like, ah, I don't know. And then you hit the, the park number button and out comes K1447. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that definitely is nice with the yellow craft and uh, having the uh, the keyer function in it. If I was and that and I actually looked into that, you can go right into the yellow yellow craft software that comes with it and program your three um, CW memories. So you can just send all if you're if you're going to a park that way. If you need to send the park number over and over again, you just program it in and do it that way. Yeah. Um, yep. All right, we've been on about an hour here. Um, any departing words, things we didn't cover? I, I think it's really well made, and it is a, a even if you can't get on the internet with it, it's it's a really good tool to learn. I I played with it when we first did them, like the first week, and all of a sudden I was recognizing uh, letters and stuff that I hadn't been able to do before. But not that I'm any good at it, but I did contact Red barely, but uh, we did make a contact. But it was, but like somebody said, it was. It's worse than Mike Fright, I think. It's because you, you, everybody can talk pretty much, you know. But yeah. uh, but this is just something a little, a little harder. Right. Yeah. But it's been, you know, what? It's a challenge. It's a challenge, and it's scary sometimes. Uh, it's and you get frustrated and everything else. But uh, I don't know what it is about it, but I still want. I still have this like strong desire to know Morse code, and yeah, I do yeah, know all too. the letters. I mean, I know all the letters. I mean, it's just a matter of. <laughs> getting faster so yeah. yeah yeah it's uh that drive is still there with me it's just uh it's it's slow you're not gonna learn morse code overnight and i see some of these guys on youtube and they're like oh i learned morse code in a couple of weeks you're like no you didn't <laughs> I, I i don't care how good you are no you didn't yeah. <laughs> it's a lifetime skill. yeah it is a i mean even the guys that are the people that have been running morse code for 20 years are still learning you know yeah, I've got a few contacts. Like I said, I uh, and poda, chasing potas with Morse code is probably the easiest thing you could do. You know, you, you go out to the website, they spot the Morse code, so you already have their call sign, you already have their park number. Everything. Um, when you call them, all they're going to do is they're going to answer you. They're going to give you your your you know five nine or whatever uh, five nine nine, and then they're going to give you um, you know thank you or something like that. I mean, it's pretty. Pretty simple. So that's what I've been doing to get kind of break the ice for myself is, you know, when I see a CW uh, park activated, I'll go out and try to work them too. And before I was terrified to do that, but now I'll go out and do those anytime I see them. So. Yeah. The nice thing about parks on the air and summits on the air is you probably need to know maybe a half a dozen to eight or nine um, quick quick um um shortcuts like uh i mean the hardest one for probably soda or even poda is probably good morning good afternoon g gm ga and ge right those are probably the hardest ones you probably already know 599 you probably already know um uh tu thank you you are 599 5nn and then maybe your park number that you probably need to 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 practice and your call sign and that's about it right yeah i mean yeah. you get you might get somebody that says qsl or uh thank you tu kyle and you might want to practice your name a couple times to to you know know your name um well, my name in morse code is awesome <laughs> sure sure yeah it's did it 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 sorry <laughs> if if you run it all together right yeah so i got to slow it down to 5 words a minute cuz it just doesn't sound right at like 20 or or 18 right right yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah that's the that's the nice thing about about uh poda and sodas you know they're quick contacts right it uh it takes the i i'm scared to death of rag chewing I like the quick contacts <laughs> because, I mean, somebody telling me what antenna they're running and amplifier and, you know, their name four times and where they're located, I, 
tell you the truth, I don't care. I mean, I, I, I hear you. I just don't care. I, it, yeah. yeah. The worst thing I ever run into a problem with in Morse code is when I'm typing out a long word and I forget what, like how to spell the word in the middle of sending. Oh, it yeah. The brain disconnect. Like, like try sending typewriter and you're like, what letters next? Right. If I'm looking at a word, I can send it perfectly. But then if I try to like send a word from memory, that I'll, I'll mess it up. I'll, yep. I'll have gaps in my spacing and everything else in my CW. But um, yeah, I mean, T.O., I, I, I even have to like get my cheat sheet out for just sending to you or, you know, thank you. You are, you know, because I, I will screw that up. <laughs> you know, sometimes I screw up letters like so. When you and I are talking face to face, we'll stutter, we'll make mistakes. It it's just normal. Yeah. And you freeze when you're doing that in Morse code and you don't have to. I mean, like you can put the wrong letter in the middle of the word and the guy on the other side is still gonna get most of it if they're any good. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I made a contact with Red Summit and I think I sent uh um H99 twice to him and he <laughs> Yeah. Instead of a five, you know, I was like, oh, so I knew I did it. And I was like, oh, dang it. And I did it a second time. And he's like, okay, thank you. Like, he knew what I meant. Yeah. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, yeah. Tom, you want to plug your uh, channel there? Yeah. Tango Oscar Mike. Um, I do POTA activation hikes and uh, make videos about uh, QRP ham radio stuff. So check it out. Very good. Um, T.O. What do you got cooking? I, temporarily offline. That is the name of my channel. And I do ham radio stuff. I mean, duh, that's why we're here on this channel. And I also do uh, vintage computer repair and exploration and playing around. I got a couple of Commodore 64s to repair. I got some rack mount PCs, some, some old Pentiums. I got a machine that I'm, a couple of machines I'm building from scratch. Whatever's fun that day. Who's, uh, can you get us uh, a uh, teaser on who's the next nugget? Yeah, uh, let's see. The Nuggets is Monday night, uh, 7 p.m. Central, right? Yeah, 7 p.m. Central. So last night was Chris Claiborne, N1CLC, and he talked about soda. And next up is KM6TNT, and he's going to talk about soda. And then after that is Ham Radio Dude. So Very good. We got Soda, Soda, and uh, Sean. Sean talks about... Talked a lot about uh, HTs, so I think we're going to talk about some HTs and maybe some soldering and maybe some contesting. Cool. Very cool. good. And then Check. you can be a nugget, anybody who's watching. And yeah. Anybody who's, who hasn't already been a nugget, <clears throat> Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about we get through 2020? How about that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't have any, anything interesting to say. I, I'll, I'll tell you that. Why don't we, uh, why don't we do nugget on, on a day that you're looking for... Uh, for the 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 D flight, yeah, just filler. Like I don't yeah, want filler. Dead air. Oh, yeah. yeah, dead air. You want some dead air? I'll I'll be a nugget. Chuck, what uh, what do you got coming coming up? Uh, you're pounding out videos like uh, like you're breathing, man. I've been trying to do at least one a week. Uh, most of my I'm, I'm Chuck KK Six USY Ham Radio Adventures, and most of my stuff is soda poda. Um, sometimes I'll do a little camping, I did a little fishing, uh, just a little adventure stuff. And then like today I went out and did a, a soda poda together. I happened to be, uh, with, uh, I went out with Javi, K T and T uh, and, we did a, uh, it's called big hill, which happened to be in the national forest, which is also a poda. So I, uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. I just set up, I just worked 20 is all I did. So I, I do a lot of builds on my channel, uh, like uh, building different kinds of antennas and different ways to make antennas and stuff like that. But try to, I kind of key mine towards the, the newer hams that, um, on the build stuff. So at least, at least everybody goes out there and tries to make at least one antenna in their, in their ham career, you know? Right. Right. Very good. Then All if right. You, then if, if you're out there and something breaks, you know how to fix it, hopefully, you know? Yeah, that is true. That is true. I got them. Yeah. Ham harder. Ham harder. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, if uh, you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe. If you haven't uh, hit the like button, hit the like. And uh, thanks for everyone participating. Thanks for the guys here to 
for their feedback and uh, spend an, an hour of their Tuesday night. So um, very good. And since Thanks for having us, Kyle. Kyle, since tomorrow's Veterans Day, I just want to th- say thanks to all the veterans out there. Yep. Really thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank, thank you. you, veterans. Yes. We did not have a parade here in St. Louis. I was a little disappointed, but um, yep, tomorrow's Veterans Day. All right. Very good. Thanks, Kyle. Yep. 73. Guys. See you guys thanks, later. Thanks, everyone. Bye.